did they play what's it called TLC or no vitamin C at uh, at your grad? Was vitamin C like the graduation? As we go on, oh. we remember. No. <laughs> Well, by now, like some like new rapper would have done that. Like, well, I know it's timeless, yeah. but really, yeah. that is a, that's a mistake. Not only that, I remember two guys uh, in our class before because it was that big. Yes. What is going on, everybody? Welcome to the F Word Podcast, an affiliate of the Saskatchewan Podcast Network. It's week number two. Uh, super yeah. exciting. It was officially launched today on the 306 or Talking 306 podcast um, that our founder, Dale Richardson, if I remember his name uh, correctly, had put out. Um, so, yes, it's live. It's happening. It's awesome. And um, obviously for the people that aren't in Saskatchewan, well, you sure, know, you can still check it out because there's a lot of really cool podcasts on there from there all sorts of stuff. Website? There is a website. I'm looking it up right now because I don't have it exactly. That would be sask, S-A-S-K, podcastnetwork.com. So you can check out a bunch of really good podcasters on there. And it's this cool thing to bring everybody together. Dale Richardson. I had it right the first time. So, yeah, it's uh, pretty awesome. And, um, yeah, super excited to be a part of it because now we're part of a network, I guess. And it doesn't change anything. Cool, cool, cool. I'm G, your host. And with me is oh, Vass and Anthony. What's up? Yeah, I was going to say big something, but I realized... I was waiting for him to go first. The big LZ. <laughs> I have no idea. The lazy? Yeah. Think oh. Blake. Right? LC. LC. No, I was going to say LZ just for the lazy part. Oh, okay. okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Oh, yeah. Um, some good news this week. Um, as beside, before we get into like some other topics or whatever. First of all, we talked about it last week. Congratulations. You graduated mm-hmm. uh, on Milestone. What are you going to do with your life now? <laughs> feel bad because like like such a big answer like just answer everything well, we're going to university like next or i guess in fall but like i got laid off and i still haven't found a job yet mm, that's important and I'm going to the gym membership yet so i feel so lazy just sitting around all day and i mm-hmm. try not to like just like eat and watch like just play video games so i'm like trying Be to find bum. stuff to do so like enjoy uh, it for now yeah but like take just, it in you <laughs> you get a glimpse of real life for a bit yeah that's what we talked about last week we talked yeah. about how life will just straighten you out yeah if yeah. not it'll completely Fuck you. He's trying to find things to do, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was going to write a book. Here. See, I, w- I want to write a book, but I always get like bored halfway through. Well, have you started writing a book? Like I have like a back in, not like an actual book book, but like. What about Game of Thrones? Have you read the books? No. No, no. He's not talking about reading. I'm talking about writing. Oh. Like I'd say back in like grade nine-ish era, like those days, like I'd actually write like short stories like based on my work and those characters. That's good. Yeah, That's was, very smart. It was interesting, but like I just always like kind of fell off and it kind of like come in waves. But you know what? Maybe I'll force myself to do something productive this summer. <laughs> Maybe. Well, I was listening to um, I was listening to a podcast and they had a pretty prolific writer on there and he was talking about his process, but he's like one of those outliers that just goes like he's like, I can go eight, nine, ten hours and just boom, 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 boom. But then all of a sudden I've got nothing after. So it just kind of comes in spurts. But yeah, I was going to write a book, and then I found out the title of the book was already taken, which I probably should have realized oh. it was taken. I should have looked it up first, but I didn't think any. What the, was the title? The book was going to be, is called Unfuck Yourself, mm. right? And some guy actually did it, and the guy that wrote The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck was the guy that wrote it. What about Last Unf Yourself? Because you could play into this podcast, and it also said kind of the same thing. Well, the thing was, I wanted it to be like um, based on the conversation that we had mm-hmm. last week, mm-hmm. which... And the crux of it is like life's going to fuck you, but how you can get out of it on your own. And uh, and I like brought Nick in on it and like just running some ideas by him. And then Soph is in Denver right now and she's all like, yeah, so that book exists. So I was like, ah, in exactly the same way too. the name is exactly the same. I haven't read the book. Oh, I don't know okay. what it is, but my guess is it's pretty much going to be in the vein of what I was going to talk about. It, I think it's more of a mental thing mm-hmm. where mine was going to be more of a practical thing like let's say you got yourself into some debt and it would be like nick's extremely well versed and graduated with i think a minor in like tax and accounting and I stuff or a major in yeah. accounting so he'd be able to like shed some light on tax stuff and how to get yourself out of that i know a lot of mortgage brokers that can help you get out of your mortgage issues mm-hmm. or how to unfuck yourself in certain real situations yeah not you know your mental st- date and stuff but anyways so the sad ending to that tale is that it didn't happen 
Could you yes. just write the book and just change the title though? Well, well the thing is, is that that, like that title is really embodies the way that I would want it to be written. Because the second you read a book or see a cover that says mm-hmm. that, automatically you're like, oh, I have an idea of what this is going to be about, right? Like, mm-hmm. it's in your face right off the bat, so the rest of it dictates the tone of the rest of the book. So it's really hard to do something like that. But I do commend you for actually writing like whatever you wrote, because I think it's a a lot of people are doing it as just not to release it to anybody, but just for themselves. Mm-hmm. Cathartic. Well, yeah, and also you had a cathartic. It's like hard. when you when you pick up new information on any with it, whatever type of information you find out. Yeah. What do you usually do? You want to go out and talk to somebody about it, mm-hmm. and you talk to somebody about it so then it can help you process process the information. And as you're talking about it, you're learning more things, and more things are coming to light. Mm-hmm. Well, writing does the same thing, and maybe better because you yourself, like the person writing it, and the person looking at what you're writing, which is you on both facets, but mentally it kind of splits. Mm-hmm you're able to critique what you're writing because then you'll look back, you'll read it, and you'll be like, is this actually how I think? And then the one part of you is like, yeah, it is. And the other part is, well, maybe I think another way. And then you just keep going. So I'm probably going to just start writing just for that fact alone. There you go. Yeah. How have you guys been? Good. I'm pretty good. Welcome back. Very busy. That's the, It's been a very busy the past two weeks. But now... For a guy with no job? Well, I had a job until like this week. It's <laughs> the first week off. Well, yeah. Good to oh, right. It was stuff official. Other yeah. stuff going on. Yeah. Well, we saw Tino, and he was like, "It officially happened on sun- Saturday or Sunday." It's funny though, because uh, the new owners didn't want to lay everybody off, mm. so there's big confusion there. <laughs> and they, I think, I'm glad I didn't stay because the past two people have stayed, Jesse and Kevin. They just quit today, actually. Oh, because just not happy. Not yeah, and they like, didn't even give them two weeks. They just said we're not coming back. <laughs> oh, yeah. awkward. Mm-hmm. They didn't give them two weeks. No. Oh, that's rough. It's a minimum wage job when you're new. Yeah. Yeah, but I, I know, know it's it's the right thing to do, but whatever. What yeah. are you gonna do in university? Uh business. I'm Mar- majoring in. I don't know yet. Like I, I was interested yeah, in move this so you're actually talking into the mic. I was interested in There it is. Holy fuck. Entrepreneurship, but I feel like you don't need an actual like degree in entre. So like marketing is what <laughs> in I'm entre. Going to. Uh but entre, I guess like I'll just like check it out, but marketing is probably the like, best thing for me just with everything i have already mm-hmm. yeah i don't think uh when it comes to entrepreneurship you don't like a lot of stuff you just come up with yourself in the way that well it society or it doesn't yeah well not only that but i mean you'll learn stuff for sure it's not like you won't learn anything in school um you'll learn practical things that are going to help you with your business whether you're like when you go to statistics class and a psychology class and maybe a sociology class if you really want to and so on and so forth all of that stuff kind of like creates a framework for how you're going to structure your entrepreneurial I do practice. want to take a psych class and a law class like coming up because I'm interested in both those things but I would recommend it but business is just one of those things you just take and it's just easy you can just go wherever you want after mm-hmm. yeah for the most Good part but I mean if you're going into entrepreneurship just take whatever you need from there like pick the classes that are going to help you mm-hmm. like statistics is a very good oh, one I have to take to. yeah mm-hmm. um, did you ever think about going to university yeah it crossed my mind Were you I was more do? of a hands on I was I think Probably like a, Tra- a trades, a trades and stuff like that. But even then, I didn't commit to anything. So hey, here we are. <laughs> yeah, How was your grad night? Ah, How did so- the speech go? Because <laughs> <laughs> that's what I was really excited yeah. to to hear last so, week. It was fifty fifty. Oh, okay. okay. The parents hated it. Wow. Right. Yes. My dad liked it. My mom hated it. She told me straight up she hated it. She just oh, there you go. It. 50-50. You yeah. have that fifty fifty. That is exactly fifty fifty. <laughs> uh, a bunch of teachers hated it. Okay. okay. Only two of them told me they actually liked it. Okay. All the students found it very funny. Yep. Cool. They were tired of the whole like program. They said like the other speeches weren't as enjoyable, but like the mm-hmm. MC part was because it was actually entertaining and funny in that yeah. way. But yeah. Was it factually entertaining? There was a good, we did have a really good one because my mom hated the joke though because she was talking about a dead person. I started off with like oh. me crying, talking about someone I lost. Oh, right. Forward. I remember you mentioning that. <laughs> and then like I went <laughs> like on you're for cold like, open. It was about a minute long of me just talking. Some guy cuts me off like, who are you talking about? I'm like, doesn't matter. Is it entertain facts? <laughs> and I got everybody. Like, nobody knew it was coming. So yeah, yeah. there were a couple edgy jokes in there. That's all right. How did your, uh, how did the representation of the LGBTQ community work out? Like, because that was the big one where you weren't sure the the wording because they wanted, I, like, again, I think it's really shitty to say the, what was it, others? others? That's so fucked up. Yeah. Like, that's such a fucked up way to look at a girl. Like, you guys are the others. Like, okay, <laughs> that doesn't work. Uh, how did that work? So, 
they did their speech and it was fine. Like what we, we introduced them was I told you, I think last one was on here exactly how Nick told me to say it. Yeah. Which I thought was really good. Uh, we didn't do any jokes. We didn't like stray on it very long and I didn't want to like, you know, just brush over it, but people came up to me and talked about saying it was good how we didn't stay on it mm-hmm. because of the way we we're introducing other people and roasting them. They were scared. We were going to go like over the line and roast the yeah, LGBTQ yeah, yeah. people. Mm-hmm. So we did it that way. They came up into their speech and a lot of people disliked it just because of the fact that it was a different tone. And it wasn't mm-hmm. like a bad speech by any means. It was just a different tone of speech where mm-hmm. a lot were lighthearted and funny. And this one just kind of serious and just kind of like people. I'm not going to like diss their speech or whatever because I didn't mind the speech. But a lot of people said it was blamey. They felt mm-hmm. like they were kind of like it was an attack. Almost. Yeah. Well, the, it's the it's the victim mentality that not that community that uh, that community in particular takes on. But most people that take on the victim mentality yeah. they they end up making villains of everybody else yeah. and people don't like feeling being felt like the villains yeah which i think is the reason why a lot of the, there is backlash against it not because you are the way you are but the way that you're acting towards it yeah towards other people oh yeah like if you're going out to look for a fight guess what you're going to get into a fight mm-hmm. it's just the way that it's going to work out and if you're out there going to Look for look for someone to blame, and if you want to be the victim, guess what? Your whole life's going to be being a victim, and I did that for a lot of years, at least five or six years specifically, and it's not cool, and, and not in, you know just in general, but it's good for you. Yeah, you guys stood up there, stood up on that podium, and just laid it out. Either way, I thought it was a very good speech written by me. Like I, it was for <laughs> the students. I said, and like you know, the students liked it. It was okay. There were some jokes in hindsight. I'm like, okay. I probably went too far. Yeah, I probably went too far. <laughs> that's twenty. Let's catch a predator one. That but that's fun. showbiz, baby. <laughs> catch a predator. I went back to what? Like there was a stint, a couple of days at work where I was just sitting there at my desk watching YouTube because there was literally nothing to do, and I went on a string of just watching the old catch a predator things again. I think I've done that twice. It's so funny. It is, and someone had super cut all the times that Chris Hansen came into the room. <laughs> it was so funny because it just it just sounds funny. Like, why don't you have a seat right there? Hey, what you doing there? Hey, why don't you have a seat over there? One Going anywhere ones, real quickly? Is he comes in? I'm Chris Hansen, the guy. No, you're not. That one was funny. <laughs> that one was on the rebrand. The one with Tetra Core. Uh, there's another guy too. I remember he walked in and this predator had like, hey, I brought tropical wine punch and he walks on the corner. That looks refreshing. I'm not talking <laughs> what you're doing yeah. here. He just, like, and he just walks out the front door. Yeah. Oh man, it's so good. Uh, it's so funny, and like some of these guys, like the newer one, felt like it was more scripted. Like the newer, the the the, the Hanson versus Predator one, as opposed to like the old Dateline version. The the, the newer one kind of felt a little bit scripted, but it's still just fucked up though. Like just, I dude, think, it's so fucked up. Like, I was gonna say I don't think Predators are fucked up, but that's like not what I meant. I, they are fucked up, but like even in our own like city right now, the human trafficking going on. It's like, Holy shit! Fuck? Yeah, man. Yeah. Like people I went to, or some girl I went to high school, like her boyfriend posted on a Facebook the other day saying like the egg thing where they throw eggs on your windshield and so you wipe shit. it. Right. But she like knew she didn't actually do it. She just kept driving. But like still, like what the fuck? How do you get these tactics going? Like how do you figure this shit out where I'm not throwing sick. egg? <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, yeah. You know what the worst part is, is that they're actually intelligent enough to come up with tactics like mm-hmm. that. That could be applied in yeah. many other things. Yep, it's sex. It's all on a very, very small scale and not nearly as important. It's the same thing when I see parents on Facebook rattling off about shit, and I'm like, "What's your kid at right now?" Like, <laughs> yeah, if you, if you, I don't know if you took all the times that you decided to to write these monologues on Facebook about how everyone's how everyone else is worse than you are. Mm-hmm. That could be more time spent with your child, and then making your child a better person. People instead live of, their lives too out loud. Man, Very I'm much. so happy Sofa's on out of it and I'm out of it. Mm-hmm. Even on like Instagram. The only thing I post now is stuff about this channel. That's it. I don't even I don't have a single post for personal. Yeah, personal post for a few months now. No, I, I rarely post my personal. Yeah, I'm all on like not very active. With entertain no. facts, that's where I go. I'll, all I'll my share something out. stupid and that's about the extent of it. <laughs> yeah, but most of the time you share with like us or or your Through friends. Through Messenger and different. That's that's what we're saying public wise. Mm-hmm. I'll I'll share something that's just ridiculous, more for a laugh than anything. <laughs> All right, let's get into it. Yeah, let's get oh, into Blake it. Oh, Blake commented on here saying new page, which means new merch. Oh my mm. god, yeah, new Blake. merch. I'm working on a new T-shirt. I think I've said that a thousand times already, but I actually came but up with a design that I like. We need to get a Celia T-shirt. Uh, yes, we do. Yeah, but no, this one's. I think I'll it's gonna pay, work. I'll pay for it. This Support. one's gonna be really cool. It's more of a minimalist shirt. I, I like. Like, I'm. I was really happy with the way that it came out. Was it gonna be a big logo or like a, like a small one right here? 
No, it's it's across the chest. You know, you got to get one with a pocket, and then you put the logo in the pocket. Very minimalist. Yeah, but I'm not a <laughs> I'm not a big fan of shirts with pockets. This I is a dress shirt, by the way. Before anyone says anything, but I don't like <laughs> like polos or t-shirts with a yeah. pocket. But I know some people love I think it. Polos are different. And they are shirt, different. I still don't like it. It's a golfing shirt, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, it is a golfing shirt. Okay, let's get into the stuff. Go for it. Let's get into it. This bottle cup cap challenge oh. is pretty fucking awesome. Have you seen Ryan Reynolds? <laughs> no, but I saw <laughs> Donnie hilarious. Yen, and Donnie Yen is a <laughs> fucking stud, man. Oh, that's the it man. Star Wars. It man. Well, I know him from. Well, it yeah, man. he's on Star Wars as well. Yes, puts on the. Bo- Actually, I first saw him in Hero, but that's a deep cut to really yeah. show how much of a cinephile I am. Anyways, puts on the blindfold and does it beautifully. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I didn't see the Ryan Reynolds. How one many else. tries do you think it takes? Well, Ryan Reynolds came out. And he had a bottle of gin or something. The Avion. Yeah, his, yeah. his gin. And he yeah. went and he just like kicked out of the guy's hand, broke it, and then walked out. <laughs> no, it was, he put it on the table, wasn't it? I think someone was holding Someone it. passed it to him oh. into his trailer and he's like, he lined up to do it, smashed it, and then like peaced out. <laughs> he's just like, <laughs> I'm out of here. <laughs> but no, it's yeah. actually like very impressive though. Like, I, I oh, want to see the behind the scenes. I want to see how many times they fucking fail. Oh, yeah. Smack before the they got hand. that one. Yeah. Probably lots. Jason Statham's was awesome. But like, Jason Statham himself is, is, the one is in awesome. The new like Fast and Furious thing. Well, he well he's been in so many movies like Transporter, mm-hmm. uh, Lock, Stock and Two Smoking Barrels, the mechanic, a, a favorite of mine. Uh, same with Snatch. He's a little typecast though. Well, n- lately he has yeah. been, but early in his career, like Snatch and Lock, Stock were um, great, Italian job. great movies. Italian Job. It, it was almost the beginning of like that Transporter cast, feel, yeah. but he was funnier. Oh yeah. You know, once he got to the Transporter, he was just that guy that was just like. Yeah, stone face. I actually watched the mechanic resurrection, which is terrible, but the action's yeah. good. Well, and that's just that that's what not saves it, but it just makes it watchable. I enjoy Jason Statham's crappy movies, and there's a lot of them on Netflix. Okay. Soph and I went on a tear. It, it was just a shitty movie after another shitty movie. But you have you guys, you're not going to attempt the bottle cap challenge. No, not me neither. Why? I'm not. I can't. I can't. I don't even think I can get my leg that high anymore. Really walk up the stairs. I'm going to try and hit a <laughs> bottle blindly. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> Roundhouse. Roadhouse. Uh, road F house. Ha- roundhouse. Toast house. Toast house. Ooh, that would be a good restaurant chain. Toast house. What would they sell? Houses. Oh, that's a nice real estate. <laughs> welcome, to the, welcome to Toast House Realty. Whenever you buy a house, you get a toast. It's like that doesn't equate to the same Are thing. Are you saying like a piece of toast or a toast like a cheers toast? Both. Oh, one of the biggest pet peeves I have. This is an odd thing, but one it's of better the than roast house where I you have. just go in and people just like <laughs> roast call you names. Like with Brooklyn Nine Nine. Nine Nine. It's when Captain Holt was talking to the one guy, uh, Bob. He's yeah. Like, I'll go to the cafeteria and try and find some untoasted toast. Yes. And it's like, untoasted toast. It's just bread. So why would you say I'm gonna go look for some bread? And it's yeah. I don't know why, but it, every time I watch it, it's just irritates me so much because it doesn't make sense you know what i realized um from the first season i don't think they did it in the later seasons there was a little bit of an inaccuracy with captain holt's uh feeling towards food so in the firehouse episode mm-hmm. where he says um where boyle finds out that captain holt li- reads his blog he's like well yeah it's the only one that tests taste mouthfeel yeah or that uh, that accounts for mouthfeel which is interesting because that's a very specific thing that a person who really appreciates so like foodie, food, yeah, right? Yeah. But then when he goes and asks Boyle to help him for his thing with Kevin, he's yeah. like, if I had my way, like I would only have like a single capsule that would have all the nutrients in there. Yeah. So, they, you know, he started off as a foodie apparently and then he went into more robot mode, yeah. which I thought was many inaccuracies, but at we'll least that show it. has that show has a lot it. fewer ones <laughs> yeah, than... That show has a lot fewer inaccuracies than most shows. Yeah. Means they pay attention. Speaking of shows, have you guys seen Stranger Things yet or no? No. no. I was going to press play yesterday. I'm but bo- I haven't even watched season two. Okay. I was. I didn't like season two. You know, a lot of much. people were kind of hit or miss. I Yeah. I thought. Um, I feel like season two felt more like a setup for season three, which I felt was a disservice to season two. You know. Mm. I can't remember much what happened. That's the only thing I really, really liked, which I one of the the one thing that I forgot to mention in the review that I did when I was still doing reviews was the relationship between um, who's the the Steve, sh- Steve and, and Dustin. And Dustin. Yeah, okay. Those two were awesome. I would watch I would yeah. watch just like episodes of just those two. 
because they were just hilarious together. But it was the one thing I never commented because I was actually really disappointed in the show. <laughs> um, 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 I don't know if you guys care about this too much, and I have to count the numbers, but Tarantino is still saying that he's retiring after his 10th film, which mm-hmm. I don't know if that's Once Upon a Time in Hollywood or if it's there's one more after. It depends if he counts Kill Bill as... I think he counts Kill Bill it's as one. one. Yeah. So that's just one thing so that got, came out. I saw like uh, one more after this. Then I technically it would be one more if he's yeah, we'll if see. he's sticking to this. I saw the trailer for that before Spider Man, and it like I, I didn't really care for it, like mm-hmm. the just premise of it as you were really hyped about it. But yeah. every trailer I see, it gets more interesting. And just oh more, man, like, I, that it's just that one of those shows really like good. it's it's almost about nothing mm-hmm. in a way, but it's about something. But I like that though. I like how not all movies have to be connected to something else or be uh, set up. Just want to right? see a. Like Hacksaw one-off, Ridge yeah. was just a one-off thing I liked. Well, there's going to be more to it because so the character that Margot Robbie plays, Sharon Tate, mm-hmm. she was one of the followers of uh, Manson, mm-hmm. Charles Manson. And I believe she was either the first one she killed or she was the first one that killed for him or something like that in this fucked up house he had in L.A. Like, it's crazy how many people got involved with the Charles Manson murders, yeah. essentially. So she's connected to him. And then the 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 movie has this. I believe what I'm getting out of it is just this transformation of the old um, old guard of actors transitioning mm-hmm. into the newer forms of film. Yeah, you know, and and how they're having to adapt and stuff. So I, I'm just, I mean, it's a Tarantino movie. I'm going to go see it. I'm super well, excited yeah. for it. Uh, do you guys believe that Taskmaster is going to be the Black Widow villain? Well, <clears throat> if that is in fact Taskmaster, well, master. I was gonna say, why do they think it was him? Did uh, the color, say it was, or? Uh, something to do with his outfit and how it kind of looked like Taskmaster, and like I the rest not. of it would be CGI. I'd know. rather see him in a present day film, not a past. I would like to see him in a Spider Man film. Mm-hmm. Um, hold on, I'm gonna I'm gonna find it right now. Let's find out who this Taskmaster character is. He's a fictional character, no doy. Um, he's the Batman of Marvel. N- no, that's uh, Moon Knight. Moon Knight. No. Oh, actually, this normally a normally face. a supervillain, but though? sometimes an antihero and a sleeper agent. Taskmaster went on to feature numerous Marvel titles, most notably as a mercenary hired as a training instructor by various criminal organizations, maybe the Red Room, oh. and an enemy slash ally of Deadpool, oh. which would be interesting. Uh, first appearance was the Avengers, yeah. 195. Anyways, interesting. What powers does he have? I think he can copy anyone's ability once he fights them. So he injected himself with SS Humpstromfreuer Horst Gorst Primer. Totally. Yeah. An elaborate modification of an adrenaline steroid cortisol designed to unlock the mind's procedural memory potential. The Taskmaster thus gained the ability to absorb knowledge instantaneously. This ability is linked to his muscle memory, allowing the Taskmaster to instantly replicate the physical movement of peak level humans. Using these photographic reflexes, the Taskmaster is highly skilled in various forms of combat as an exceptional martial artist. Bloom, 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 bloom. It doesn't say anything about. So it's not more like an abilities thing. It's more that he can remember He'd be really the good patterns as a, and stuff like that. Like it's more of a Spider-Man game too. That's what yeah, he's doing. It's yeah, almost like exactly. Those spider sense. Anyways, innocent, I innocent. don't think it's him. I I don't think he would be for that type of movie. I really, really want. Hey, it's a bell. Oh. Um, who I haven't seen for a while, except for that time I met you in person. <laughs> Thanks for coming to meet, see me, man. Um, I don't know if that would be right for a Black Widow. I don't think it's him, anyways. I just think it was like, oh, this there's a slight connection. What the do you only guys think? think? Or the only thing I, only reason I think they would have him in that movie is if they're scared that it won't do very well, and they want to have like a hyper villain or a more hype villain be in the movie to sell tickets. <laughs> Interesting. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that would work that well. I, I don't think Black Widow needs that. I think she can stand on her own. I She's think so too, but like she is the one that like I'm not too worried if about. Captain Marvel did that well. I'm sure Black Widow is fine. Yeah, yeah, and people like Black Widow more than Captain Marvel. Guys like Black Widow there you go. for one reason specifically. But yeah. I like her because I think she's cool. Yeah, I think it has nothing to do with her outfit and how it makes <laughs> the contours of her body look. I'm just saying, Scarlett Johansson is an attractive woman. She is a yes. beautiful woman. I still, I still remember. I think her first movie must have been Home Alone three. Remember what a terrible movie that was. But she was the sister yeah. in Home Alone three. See, it was terrible and it wasn't at the same time. I think I still was young enough to enjoy it. Yeah. So it was, well, it was it, it was still okay. After that, it got ridiculous. The fact that there was like a four, five, and possibly five. a six. There's so many. I know. There's there's, I remember one was an Xbox one, Ugh. where the I'm, guy on the opposite end of the Xbox heard he got kidnapped and tracked his IP address and came down and found the kid. Wow. It's like yeah. Thor when he was attacking the Fortnite kid. 
Oh my god, for making much. fun of yeah. Thor. He's a new master. Um, <laughs> which also speaking of Thor, uh, James Gunn has officially said that like the Asgardians is not going to happen. Oh. Which I no, I'm well, happy for. Well, yeah, whatever. Yeah, I'm Before. glad that's not going to happen. It should be like a, a short <laughs> a film. Short. I think at I think best it's a post credit. Yeah. Because really, what else is it going to be? No. It's... Other than Star Lord and Thor ragging on each other for an entire thing and then thor and rocket ragging on star lord and like all of like just everyone egging on star lord at one point it's kind of like okay you guys are dicks now yeah well, i just hope it doesn't get to the point where it was the main reason i hate gardens of galaxy 2 was drax roasting mantis the oh, whole yeah. movie because it got old so fast and yeah. he kept doing it throughout the whole film so i swear to god if they do that in gardens of galaxy 3 wait that fact alone made well, you just, give it a two out of ten. Well, no, the humor. I just hated oh. the humor. I thought it was like really predictable. There's a lot of reasons. I don't know if it's a two. Or, I've I've only watched it one time. Fair enough. I should probably watch it a second time. But I just don't want to. I still I still like it for the heartfelt moments. Like it really did the tugging on the heartstrings really well. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I, I don't know. I've, it'd be funny, but it, again, it'd be more funny as one of the remember the Thor shorts that they did oh, in between Civil, Civil War. Yeah. Yeah. Those ones were hilarious. I more, think, more of a marketing thing than yeah, actual in the movie. Like, kind of like, so Thor's off doing his thing, and the Guardians of the Galaxy are doing their thing. And at one point, they stop at a pit stop, and they run into each other. And so there's Fat Thor with his sunglasses and stuff, picking up some Zarg nuts. And then he kind of like looks up, stares, it's Thor and Drax, yeah. blows by him. Says hi to the tree and rocket, and then he's like, uh, you know, just just a little kind of interaction like that. I think that'd be funny. Well, I think isn't he going to be a big part of the movie though? Thor. Yeah, Thor? I don't think so. Three, no, you don't think why? Why would he go off with him then? Well, well he, he, he needs to off, get to space. Yeah. Oh. How else is he going to get there? I th- I, th- I well, genuinely thought he was going to be a Stormbreaker. By Frost. Yeah. <laughs> I genuinely thought he was going to be a big part of the next movie. Oh. No, I think it's just uh, that was just a way for him to like start his own journey of mm-hmm. becoming who he wants to be versus who he thinks he should be. Yeah. Okay. Which I think is still a wonderful and beautiful way mm-hmm. to have a character go that? out. Um, why is he going in space though? Because hmm? Asgard is on Earth, so where is he going? No, 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 that himself. Asgard, like there is no more. Asgard. There is no more Asgard. It's whatever new Asgard is there. But Valkyrie is going to be in, like she is the rightful queen now. So he's just going off. He just wants to go find himself. Like he literally has to do that thing right now because he's wanted to be his father's son. He wanted to be like when he, in Avengers One, he's like I called to war, and he finally realized that me calling to war isn't the life I want anymore. And then he found out that you know my my dad's a bit of a dick. He could have told me about my sister long ago, and he's not the greatest guy in the world. So very much similar to how Black Panther found out his dad had killed his uncle, and he was actually the bad guy in a lot of this. And Killmonger had every right to do, in a sense, what he did to an extent. Mm-hmm. It was kind of the same thing. His whole the whole world that he had created in his mind that he was living had flipped completely upside down. So now he was trying to find, he, you know, in a, I guess in a Jordan Peterson way, he was thrust into chaos. And so now he's trying to build his life up and, you know. I heard a cool rumor there. about Black Panther 2, actually, that uh, Michael B. Jordan is coming back. Oh. And how he's doing it is that Namor is going to revive him in the ocean. That's why he's like, they said, because Namor's going to be the villain they're thinking, a lot of people are thinking. That'd be sweet. And how... Uh, Black Panther, or how, whatever his name is, Killmonger said, bury me in the ocean with my ancestors. Mm-hmm. And they're like, I don't know. That'd be a cool connection, though, because he was a really good villain. Well, not only that, it makes sense that Okoye was the one in Endgame that said that there was these fissures that were happening yeah. in the water, earthquakes, and she's like, do you want to do anything? He's like, there are earthquakes in the water. So that hinted to Namor. And Jimmy also mentioned it in our Endgame mm-hmm. review um, as well. And I was like, oh, that would be dope. That'd be really interesting, though, because you've got a, a sea create person like an Aquaman, essentially, versus Black Panther, who's not a water person. I mean, not a water, not that he's not a water person, but, you know. And pause. Um, 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 CD Projekt Red making three games, supposedly, in the Cyberpunk 2077 universe. Listen, CD Projekt Red, I love you guys so much, but just make the first one. Make sure we all love it, which I don't think we won't love it, but it's very ambitious, especially if it's going to be as big as... It's gonna Do you be. hear the backlash of that game? What was the deal with that? I didn't look it up People at all. People are hating on it because they're saying like, they shouldn't bring actors into video games. That was the case. That's that, the backlash. They've been doing really? that for years. For but, years. I don't know why because people are saying like who won E3 and they all said like what, what's it called? Again? Cyberpunk. Cyberpunk won. For and sure. People are saying oh well no Keanu Reeves won. And then people are bitching saying well you know actors shouldn't be in video games even though they don't realize that what is it with 
uh, Norman Reedus. Yeah. That was like probably the second hype one, I'd say. Yeah. Death Stranding. Death Stranding yeah. 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 And who else is in there? Um, it's that French girl from... She was in the last James Bond movie. Uh, she's been in a few things. Anyways, yeah. And also uh, Mads Mikkelsen in the Hideo Kojima. Uh, I think it's also Death Stranding, isn't it? Maybe. I'm not sure. Sounds yeah. Japanese. I think it's stupid. Yeah. That that argument is so dumb. No. It doesn't make sense. There's no merit behind it. It's just why would you want people like main like Keanu Reeves especially? Why wouldn't you want someone like him to be in a video game just to have, like bring the genre up more and have yeah. people interested? Well, the argument would probably be the fact that like oh you guys are just putting Keanu in there to hype up your game and your game will suck, but you have Keanu in there so it'll get sales. So that's probably that's a valid. Like that's a valid plan though. I, well, I it's I not agree. that it's just a valid plan. Yeah. After The Witcher Three, everyone's waiting for the next CD Projekt Red game. But think if of, Keanu Three, Keanu Reeves wasn't in there at all, yeah. that that change him being in it changed nothing, at least for me personally, because I love that developer. I love The Witcher Three. Um, I love their business practices. There was no DLC that they charged. They didn't charge for the soundtrack. They didn't, they released the game complete, mm-hmm. full. Here you go, like an old style way of selling games. Not now yeah. where it's like. You know, three quarters of the way done, and then you have to pay for the other quarter. Yeah, at an exorbitant amount of money, um, with an exorbitant amount of money. So that's why I was excited. I think it's just cool that he's going to be in Keanu it. I think Keanu just brought more exposure to people like myself who didn't play The Witcher. Yeah, so like yeah. we didn't really. I don't really care about this game, but now that I actually know about him, it's on my radar. And I actually know about it. Before then, like people talked about it, like you were excited about it, but I didn't actually like super excited know what it was well and, and i'm excited for a weird reason because i shouldn't be it's a first person shooter and that's not my bag but it it's is I, I, it's more because of the company mm-hmm. grand theft auto wasn't my thing either and i love the shit out of red dead too you know it's just exactly. i mean sorry grand theft auto online isn't my mm-hmm. bag i didn't mind the single player but i didn't feel as, as strong as the other ones but that's also because i feel that video games that split up their departments into online and multiplayer or sorry online and single player in one game mm-hmm. a lot of times it doesn't work very well i i'd prefer just just release the fucking single player well they released the online like a month after the story because i don't think it was ready when it launched the sure. online for grand theft yeah and it didn't do well at launch either oh no it was awful it was but now buggy. it's bringing in the thing they, they've had time to like it's still bringing in money like it, i think it just i think it killed red dead online honestly because i think red dead online is dead but gta 5 online is still like going hard red dead online they fucked up for uh based because of the economics terrible terrible pay-to-play economics in it mm-hmm. and also um as cool as that is, they never found a way to tap into what's fun about that time period. And also, that time period is restricted. Mm-hmm. Whereas regular Grand Theft Auto, oh, you've yeah, got jets fly flying jets, everywhere, right? Fly more so, do whatever yeah. you want, basically. Um, so I, I felt that there was a way that they can make it just as engaging as the game is mm-hmm. with your posse of people riding horses and stuff. But they just never tapped into it because they just wanted to make another Grand Theft Auto online for Red Dead 2, yeah. which I feel didn't work because... The time period just doesn't allow that. Like you're, you are restricted by the technology yeah. of the time. Um, speaking of, I guess you sent me the Witcher pictures. Oh yeah, yeah, I did. The Witcher pictures. When is that coming out? Is it? Are they done? Are they just Netflix? Still isn't it 2020 release or is it 2019 release? Let me see where. Uh, I'll see when you sent it. <clears throat> or did you? You just sent I the think photos. Looks, I'm not a big Witcher fan, but I think I looked okay. It's well, just, never a, it's just them, the first. Yeah, no. no, I've never played it either. This is what she looks like. Yeah, I know. I saw that after. Okay. Because there's that day that. Oh, I was talking about the Henry Inst- Cavill photo. Instagram. Well, they released 10 photos oh. and like it had Yennefer and that other girl. Yennefer of Vengabird. Whatever. Her name's Yennefer regardless. Yennefer She's amazing. Yennefer. I know. Because they thought it'd be fun. It's got a it's got a Nordic feel to it. Oh, there you go. Nice. Why, why? It's Geralt, not Gerald. So, was it the main hero? Yeah, so Geralt of Rivia. Imagine Geralt is coming to kick your ass. The, the <laughs> butcher of uh, Bl- Blottisberg or something like that. That's true. So Gerald came and was like, whatever. It just reminds me of like the Brooklyn Nine-Nine guy who writes those stories that have like all silent T's in them and just like a bunch of weird names and shit. Like, yeah. Like Geralt. And butcher shit. of Blaviken. Sorry. Yeah. Like, what the <laughs> fuck is that title? <laughs> well, that's just, that. That's what they ended up calling him as a nickname because uh, oh, that, it was one of the Nightfire series or whatever. Yeah. Been, okay. Oh, yeah. Uh, no, but the butcher of Blaviken is there was a place called Blaviken and they had asked him to go kill somebody because he's a monster hunter for hire. Right. And something went down and the people that had hired him to do that ended up being the 
bad guys, and so he ended up just killing everybody in Blaviken because they were just pieces of shit. So that's why he became the butcher of Blaviken. Have you? They're based on books, aren't they? Yes. Have you read them? No. no. I will though. I really want to because uh, the lore behind it. Are they past the books? Are they just oh the games? I, 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 the show is a prequel to the games, from what I understand. Oh, okay. Uh, but I don't know how much of a prequel because at least in The Witcher Three, kind of well, it didn't jump back in time. A lot, but it had some moments where it kind of did a flash, a quick flashback Mm -hmm. while it was telling the story. Because the thing with The Witcher is based on The Witcher three and a lot of stuff that I've 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 read the synopsis. Like I've watched the full games for Witcher one and two because online on YouTube I got really into watching like like, the movie cut scenes. And the stories are still amazing. But what's more interesting about The Witcher is Siri, the character. So Siri is like Geralt is like a father figure to her. Mm-hmm. But she is so like such a powerful character in that in the lore, but she doesn't know it, and a lot of people don't know how more how powerful she is. She's like a mage, type but of it's thing. like her story, mm-hmm. but it's told from Geralt's perspective, which is super interesting. But, is she meant to be like a has magic powers that kind of thing? She is extremely powerful. She is um, she's just she's got powers of her own. She's a very gifted fighter. She's very gifted she's, like in everything. She is like. I don't know. She's like the one. I'll put it that way. N- not to any specific end, but she's just the one. Mm-hmm. So from the photos you've seen, do you like them? or? I'm not a huge... I'm a, I actually like Henry Cavill because I know it's a younger Geralt. Um, I don't mind how he looks. I think he looks really good. Uh, Siri, nah. Yennefer, not a fan. Looks nothing like her. She doesn't look like... Yennefer is not your archetypal female sorceress let's say she holds her own she doesn't let like things like love or anything really bind her because Geralt is the one that's actually chasing her a lot but she has her missions to do Mm -hmm. and the way that she's designed in the games like you can sense that she's she's pale of skin raven hair there's a there's a song on there uh, Priscilla's song on there and it talks about it's pretty much about her right um so I don't know. It didn't look like her. <laughs> she got does it, does it does those photos do anything for you? I mean, I can't compare the game, it. So I've never played the game, so I can't compare. So let's it. just say looking at them. I think Henry Cavill looked. I've only seen his photo. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Henry Cavill looked good though. Yeah, yeah, he, he looks looked good. Looked like the box art I always see. Gerald. Um. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how they translate it though. Mm-hmm. Um. How many episodes is it? Like ten. I hope so. I was rewatching Daredevil. Mm. I rewatched. Yeah, I rewatched Daredevil. And I watched Jessica Jones Did season three. Oh, okay. I finished it. Did it actually finish, yeah. or was it like it was? It was kind of like just an ending. Oh. Like it's essentially like if the first season just ended, mm-hmm. and then that's it, and they it just stayed there. That's right? what the show ended for me because I haven't seen the season two yet. Yeah, season two. I there was a lot of things that they did. There was a, there was a few things that they did right, and a lot of things they did wrong. And in the third one, I felt it was kind of the same. And for some reason, I feel like they took the spotlight away from Jessica and they were moving it on to Patsy, who is Hellcat, like as a comics, um, Trish Walker, who I thought is a just annoying character. Like, I understand what they were trying to do with her character. I just felt that the actress didn't execute it very well. And she just came across as like every time she spoke, all I can think of, like the sound was. And it's like, come on, like, fuck off. And they had David Tennant, who was Kilma or Kilgrave in the first one. They had him on the credits. He was in there. He wasn't even in there. It was like a voiceover, like a like she heard him in her mind or whatever. And I'm like, good villain. Like I love. He was was so good. He was so good. And then I season two of Daredevil. I I still really like. I just. I think they should have just gone with the eight episodes in some of them. Like season two should have been eight episodes. That's, that was my problem with watching Daredevil and all the shows. Is it just felt like it went on just like just too long. Like, yeah. Just over like the good like length. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I think with Stranger Things season three, I think it's just eight episodes, which I think is prime. Number. I think that's a great um, a great amount. I think six to eight is really good. I think they have one or two seasons left of Stranger Things. Oh, they're they're going they like said, for a full I think five? five max, but it could end before. So I don't know. I haven't seen it yet though. So. I'm almost done dark. I'm only watching oh. one episode at a time. Ooh. Still a good show. How long? Is that is that on season one? Or is that no, on? season two. I was going to say, I thought you watched it a lot. No, no, I did. I did. Um, But season two's out. 
You haven't said anything for a while. What do you got? Nothing. Nothing. I got nothing. Is it just because we're picking topics that you're not interested about? Avengers isn't really breaking anything, any more records. Oh, no. It's, yeah, it's, I think it hit a halt. Yeah. Mm. Um, I saw I th- a meme, though. Was, uh, they should have waited until um, later to do the re release. Well, Spider Man Far From Home now. It's kind of like. Yeah. yeah they, found, they didn't find the best week to do it. Yeah, I saw true. a meme of Captain America versus Captain America, and it's like Avatar and Endgame fighting, and it just says Thor when uh, Hulk is snapping, doing that little thumbs up thing, and it's just Disney. <laughs> Disney owns both properties. You I'm need just to stay scared. there, man. You can you hear me breathing? It. No, I can't hear okay, you I'm breathing. scared. That's why. No, like I'm looking at the levels and I can barely hear you. Okay. And then you come up to the mic. To it. Everyone's yeah, going to be listening being like, wow. Anyways, sorry. So anyway, I just saw that was funny because I don't think it makes sense though because Disney does, didn't, doesn't have that money from Avatar. but Disney owns both? <laughs> well, they own both, but they don't actually own Avatar right now. They can yeah. make that whole box office themselves. No, for sure. Um, but but Zoe Salanda, Zoe Zaldana. Zaldana. Okay, I was close. Solanda. <laughs> Why don't we? Well, she's in both, which I find like crazy. So good for her. She's awesome. And on yeah. top two. Yeah. Well, we talked about this. I think last week or the week before. This is like their last shot to actually make it because of the way that theater uh, mm-hmm. interactions are happening, or the less people are going to theaters. Whoever's at the top now, I think, is for till the end of time, they'll be the number one box uh, office. Yeah. I watched the scenes on YouTube because someone just did a super cut. Mm. Yeah, it's not worth it. The first of all, the far I didn't from see home, them yet. So far from home, like extra thing is just the opening because mm-hmm. I came in late and I just saw like, oh, I saw this on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Stan Lee credit or thing was cool. Like, it was nice, but then yeah, that did you guys see the scene with Hulk in it? Nope. No, I haven't seen it yet. Okay, yeah, no, it looks very bad. They did not finish the scene. They just fucking put an. Unfinished it's a DVD scene. like extra. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Interesting. That's what it seemed like. Deleted scenes mm-hmm. from the DVD or Blu-ray that they added on there. Hmm. Uh, you saw. Far from home. Actually, yes. no. Before we get into your review of it, I still have one more topic. Okay. Uh, I don't know how this is going to go. Legitimately, I have no idea. Live action, Little Mermaid. Oh, oh yeah, whatever. that thing. Cast R and B singer. Okay, it's H A L L E. Halle Bailey. Bailey. Yeah. Is it Halle Bailey? Yeah. Halle Bailey. Halle not Bailey. Ha- not ha- Halle Berry. <laughs> That's what I was thinking at first. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I I I don't care. No. No. I don't think race matters, honestly, in the story. Why would it? Like, why would well, it the thing is this: the original is there. Mm-hmm. Um, I always look at it this because way: because it's based on Nordic, it would make sense that she should be Caucasian. Is it Nordic? It's that someone went on to say like it's technically a Nordic thing with Neptune and all that stuff. It's you well, kind of is it Neptune uh, Roman? Mm. Roman, the Roman gods, let's say, were yeah. after the planets. The Greek yeah. gods were named like Zeus, Poseidon, and everything like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. So well, my, Neptune would be a Roman then, so yeah. there you go. So if if they went I don't with know. it, yeah. But if she did the best job of everybody that auditioned, yeah, then who cares? But if they, I don't think they went out of their way to find a black actress. Yeah, mm. that's that's where I'm not sure. I think probably could have actually because if, if, if she, yeah, if she is a if she is a legitimately good actress, then, then that's know? fine. I don't know. I don't think so. She's an R and B singer, from what I know. Yeah. Well, I mean, Disney you need to sing for that. You need, you need to sing for that movie, so I guess yeah. it makes sense. To you sing. do, you do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I. You know what I don't like? The responses on both sides. Like the second she got cast, people went out of their way to throw out t- tweets like, "Oh, people are gonna hate this." So fuck you, like right away. And it's like, dude, no one said anything yet. Yeah. And if they're like, it's weird. I was thinking about this this week. Is it considered a reimagining or a live action remake if you ch- drastically change? the characters like in terms of like their their overall look yeah because so. and, and the other thing i look at is yeah I, I don't think so either but i'm like how do you how do you have a conversation about this where it changes the way that they're they're kind of sh- they're kind of showing it to, mm-hmm. or they're 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 pitching it to people so yeah. this is a live action shot for shot remake of ariel or of little mermaid when our main our little mermaid is the african-american so technically not like the original yeah its own thing so Reimagining is a title that I would put mm-hmm. it at. Like we're doing our own thing. Yeah. Right. But I, I don't care. Like I have the original. I was in love with the original. I love. Well, you gonna go with Ariel? You, if if it was a white woman, well, mm-hmm. I'm not, that's bad. I'm gonna say. What, what do you see? This Amber Heard. <laughs> she what? is. I mean, kind of already an Aquaman. Yeah. I would not see this movie either way. I, can, I was gonna say yeah, if it was a white woman, would you see it? But that was a bad question. But I wouldn't see it either way. I just see Aladdin. I don't care to. Lion King. I'll see maybe just because just for shits and giggles. I'm gonna see it for sure. Oh, I still yeah, see Twister sure. four. First of all, that's my fucking top priority coming up here. But <laughs> you know, I haven't seen a movie since Endgame. No, Spider Man Far From Home was the first one I saw. Yeah. After Entertain Facts died. Like, I, really, like I was talking days. to somebody about this too. I was just like, "Yeah, I uh, I co-host a 
movie podcast and I haven't gone to a movie since Endgame. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, I watch a lot at home, but like three days before Toy Story Four came out, I'm like, oh fuck, Toy Story Four is coming out in like this week. <laughs> Aladdin was the last one I saw when it first released, and you liked it. I did like it, yeah. yeah. But yeah, no, I just I need to see some, I need to see that shit. Yeah. I guess um, I don't know. Like my mind will automatically go to like. What if they cast? What if Ariel was a black woman in the beginning, like the very like the the cartoon was a black woman, yeah. and then they decided to cast a white woman as Ariel for the reimagining? Oh, they'd be there'd be pitchforks, of yeah. course. You know, so that's that's the double standard right there. It's like for us, it's like you do want that almost that shot for shot. They're gonna change the story slightly, expand it, make it maybe probably add an extra way. song like they usually do, or take away an extra it's fine, song. Fine, because again, they pull from if there's ever a Broadway done or whatever, yeah. maybe. like Shrek the musical. Yeah, there you go. I don't know. Yeah, live action. I, I don't think it's <laughs> it's literally like when I saw the news, I was just like, "All right, here we go." Like again. I, well, oh, shit. Oh, shit. Here we go. Ah oh, shit. Um, actually, that should be the title of the book. Ah oh, shit. No, no. I don't know. It's not getting the response. Gonna, so that's okay. If that, if you, I feel like you should write the book first, and then the title just come naturally after. Yeah. yeah. Like that's how most people do it. Like, that's how I wrote. You know what I really wanted to do? I wanted to transcribe my the journal that I wrote on our honeymoon. It's not a. It's not sexualized at all <laughs> <laughs> no so my uh one of our good friends uh so baptized both her daughter do- their daughters they gave us a journal and they said just write in it because like 10 years later you guys are going to find this book and you're going to be like oh we're glad we wrote in it because it's a story of your honeymoon right i wrote in that thing every single day and we're talking like i wrote it like i was writing a story and the fact that Soph was reading it and laughing was a telling with that the fact that i'm like oh i wrote this pretty good so i was actually thinking of like rewriting it and being like the first honeymoon or whatever. Arturo's in on the new one. Uh, Arturo's in with what? It's a solid. With like five minutes left. Fourteen minutes. <laughs> but anyways, yeah, it comes down to the fact yeah, that yeah. I just don't give a shit anymore. This no. whole like they're going to cast whoever they want to cast. I really don't care. Yep. I, as long as I, I don't know. I think for me, as long as it doesn't turn into some virtue signaling bullshit or some racist bullshit on the other side. Yep. I just the just let I the movie fucking is, be. I just don't care. That's my motto. I just don't care. So this doesn't concern yeah. me. I'm not gonna. I was gonna see this movie either way. So I just don't give a shit. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if I was gonna see it either. Because then the argument is, well, they cast Lion King with all like African Americans, right? I was pissed off that they never got Scar. They didn't even yeah. ask him, and they yeah. got James Earl Jones. And then I'm thinking, what if the opposite happened? The pitchfork will come out. Yep. There's a great saying by that Naval guy I was telling you about, and he was essentially, uh, if you want to know who your overlords are, find out who you can't make fun of. Yeah, oh, God. right. So whoever you can't criticize is actually who's the overlord of your life. Mm-hmm. And that's something to think about and very telling. And, you know, I've noticed I've noticed a lot of that recently. Well, I think like society is so stupid. Do you think we're, because we're Greek, you're Greek and Italian. Mm-hmm. Are we in that mix? Yeah. You know what, that's what I hate. Do you think I could start complaining about the 400? Male, it's like, you know, what, man, just calm down. I'm <laughs> like, I, I don't, like, you know, well, like we're born in Canada. Yeah. Right. But I mean, well, our, so our heritage, both parents, like your dad's Italian, your mom's Greek, right? Our parents are straight from the quote unquote motherland. Yeah. And our people suffered 400 years yeah. of slavery mm-hmm. and persecution by the Turks. And we're not out there bitching and complaining about it. Well, it's because we're white. Because we're our, white. <laughs> I consider myself more olive. But yeah. that's the thing, though. It doesn't matter. Because the other people, if you talk about anything that they don't agree with, they'll yeah. stay with me in a debate. Well, you're a white male. It's like, no, I am a Greek Oh, man. Shut I, the fuck up. Yeah. But I, I've seen that on, like, higher level ones. Oh, yeah. There was there was, um, there was was another, it was a Jordan Peterson debate with a guy, uh, Stephen Fry. And there was an African-American on the uh, opposing side. There wasn't a single point made in, like, half an hour or whatever it was because this guy was just calling Jordan Peterson a white guy. Yeah. Oh, you angry That's white guy you or whatever. The debate when you have to go yeah. back and say, this guy just spent the entire time and I'm like, you are. Th- it is absolutely disgusting to watch. But that's racist in itself. It is. Yeah. No, it is. Anybody that anybody that doesn't think that's racism, you're fooling yourself. But well, we're not going to get of, into that. You talked about some guy. I don't know why this made me think about this. This was an actual Ben Shapiro tweet from the other day. Oh. And it's Joss Whedon. He's responding to Joss Whedon. So Joss Whedon said, "We have a racist, fascist president who's using armed thugs and law." law enforcement and illegal militias to keep us cowed and hopeless and he just goes on and Ben Shapiro responds with hashtag release the Snyder Cut <laughs> well my thing is, is wow. who is the real tweet he actually said this that's hilarious. I, it's I, I don't want to get too into it but I, my only thing to Joss Whedon would be listen man thank you very much for Avengers and Buffy and Firefly and Serenity Justice League, so. 
Uh, no, I don't. I don't think he fucked up but Justice League. I think the studio Snyder fucked it up, uh, and I don't think the Snyder cut would be any better. But That's all I'm saying is that we when you say seen. we, when you say we, I sh- really should think you should consider who this we is, because as far as I'm concerned, Joss Whedon probably tweeted that from his five million dollar house on his three thousand dollar phone, and he's sitting there. Bunching together, we, which a lot of virtue signaling people do, which virtue signaling does nothing but try to boost your status up for a short amount of time. That's the, that's a very, that's a fundamental thing I've noticed recently. Um, and I've been on a tear of like listening to a lot of high up public speakers from like the left, the right, the middle, black, white, whoever, everybody. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's really interesting when you, when you hear people saying the words we, when you consider not, check your privilege or status. I'm not talking about that, but I'm just talking more from the thing of like, you know, let's, let's really, let's really see where you're coming from on this one, because you're not part of that, right? Your kids haven't been taken away from you. All of that hasn't happened to you, Mm -hmm. you know, but however, I do understand where their heart is because they're, they're coming from a compassionate side. So I understand that that also garners, emotion and a very big emotional response so i i try to I, I look at tweets like that very like with almost like a grain of salt but at the same time it's like dude i know where you're coming from but come on man yeah. you know just, just just think about it for a second spider-man far from home non-spoiler review i'm not be talking much about it because honestly oh. i'm scared if i'm gonna spoil it accidentally i came in knowing very little because i didn't watch any trailers i watched maybe one yeah the first one such a great tactic. It pays off when the movie's actually fucking good and you don't watch any trailers. <laughs> so this is a nice payoff. Uh, honestly, I enjoyed it more than Endgame. Because, and not like Endgame was a better movie just because it was like, you know, like overall, but Spider Man just with one guy opposed to like so many heroes and all the hype moments Endgame had. Yeah. Like, this was just more like enjoyable where you walk in like kind of mediocre expectations mm-hmm. and just like fucking amazing. <laughs> Mysterio, amazing. It's like all the characters were so great. The way they explained the snap and all that crap. Uh, do you guys like is it a spoiler if I say there's a Stan Lee cameo or if there isn't one? I think there's no. I there would imagine a, there would be. Yeah, they said that there would have been one. Yeah, that that's been no. public knowledge. There isn't. Oh, there isn't one. Oh, I thought it was public knowledge no. that there was one. No. Oh. Yeah. I don't know. I tried googling to see if there was like maybe like one of those Deadpool two things where they had a poster of him. Mm-hmm. There, I couldn't find one. But yeah, no, there wasn't one. I was kind of disappointed. You might but, find one later on. Yeah, no. They might have one in like an extended. Mm-hmm. But uh, they cut the scene where he goes in the trailer and kind of like fucks down the cops and he's like i can't do that i'm doing your job yeah apparently that's gonna be a bonus movie but overall very enjoyable i think i'd give it bonus a movie or, or bonus scene no like a, you know how they had like the thor thing for yep. people who are like those things oh, okay like the shorts yeah. okay and gotcha yeah. But, oh yeah i think eight out of ten like i want to see it again the post credit scene is probably the best post credit scene i've seen in a marvel movie oh wow. really like it actually had me bold all, like fucking hype as yeah. fuck and it was just what the fuck well that's all i'm gonna say about that hmm the action was good. It felt very Spider-Man, just the quips and all that. Yep. Like, I just, oh my God. Like, I would say Spider-Man 2 is still the best. Yep. I put it right underneath. So you put this one above Far From Home, or uh, Homecoming, sorry. Yes. Oh, yeah. This is a I, He already scene. told me about this a little bit, and I said, where do you rank it to Winter Soldier? Because he has Winter Soldier was technically his top-ranked MCU movie. And this is part of the Infinity Saga. It's mm-hmm. still, wow. This is no. the epilogue. It's not part of the Infinity... <sighs> Yeah. It's not an Infinity it's, it's, Saga. It, it's it's more phase three. phase three. Yeah, and phase so three. So phase one, two, and three are all together. Okay, because it's been... Right. No, sorry. Yeah, but I mean, the Infinity Saga is actually phase one to the now. Like, no, they're, they're so actually end calling... Game. I, what end, I, the end game was the end of the Infinity Saga because Infinity... But this is the epilogue. This is like Frodo yeah, and everyone yeah. hugging each other after. This yeah. is everyone... Like, Bilbo's getting married. Everyone's going off and are doing their own thing. Are that box set? Or is that they are. Thing? Okay, well, yeah, I guess It's we'll going to be a real thing. What is it? What box set? The Infinity. Yeah, well, they did, they did a about teaser it about it kind of thing. What's it look like? Oh, it just pocket. looks like a box right now. I don't know if there's going to be bitch. anything else. Was that going forward? I don't know. It looked really legit. There's going to be it's a It's going to be 500 set. bucks probably. Yeah. yeah. But no, yeah. I might buy it. I'm going to buy it. Worth it. It was. But what level? What like what resolution? Now with 4K coming out. They'll probably do it. Do you just do Blu-ray and just deal with Blu-ray and the load? But now everything you want is 4K. I would want it. They're going to do Blu-ray. Then they're going to re-release it in 4K. Yeah. Because that's how you get that money. Exactly. Baby, I got your money. And don't that's, you I'll worry. probably wait for the 4K release then. Do you have a 4K TV? The TV is 4K, but here's the thing. No, no console 
supports 4K right now, does it? Uh, PS4, PS4 Pro. Pro? Pro? Oh, oh, I mean that. Year. Xbox One X. Yeah, just wait a year until the PS5. Yeah, obviously. You, have to wait. You, can't, you can't buy consoles at launch. You have to wait like six months. Oh, I, I bought that. mine at launch, and it's still good. You're a lucky man. Dude, I'm extremely lucky. I've never lucky. heard a man say that. <laughs> My PS4, I bought it opening day with Black Flag, because that was the game that it was releasing with. Still good to this day, and I didn't realize how many games I actually played on there because I went through my trophies. First of all, I'm terrible. I'm not a trophy person. Like, yeah, there's people that go and like they want to platinum the game. Ethan that's, does. that's their goal. Ethan did it with platinum. Origins. He did it with Odyssey. That's fair. He's done it with lots. That's fair. Of games. And you know what? That's the whole point of the game. Is that's how you fully, fully get your money's worth out of it. Is well, you you get all the trophies. You get all the hundred percent completion. Now, if you do it at every level, that's just one your own personal goal. I don't. Do you actually get a trophy for that too? I well, got completely no. completing the game in well, like every mode. No, maybe well some games depends some, if yeah. they actually have it. No, see, the, I I agree and I disagree. Yeah, um, I think for a game like Spider Man, let's say, which is a shorter game, mm-hmm. I agree with that. I'm the only one. The only trophy I have left is to get all the suits because mm-hmm. I had to finish some of those challenges and I just didn't do it because I wanted to get onto Assassin's Creed Odyssey. As soon as it came out, you could get platinum before yeah. they added all the extra trophies. That's yeah. true. My friend too. did that and he still has platinum, but they added extra shit. Yeah. Okay. God of War though, I got platinum trophy. Oh, there you go. Um, all the other ones are like Assassin's Creed. I was pretty close to a bunch of them, but I mean, some of them be- end up becoming a little bit tedious. Like one of the yeah. Assassin's Creed Origins ones was like kill thirty people with an exploding oil tank can, or whatever one, the fuck, with, one, with shot. one shot or something like that. That's next to impossible. So at that point, it becomes tedious just to get it. Well, that's easy because you just Lord. get everyone and chase you, right? Yeah. Actually, one of my favorite things, not in Odyssey, but I did it in Origins, mm-hmm. was I put on the uh, Winter Soldier. Captain America one, and I went put on fists, and I just went around just punching fools. It was pretty awesome. I do that a lot still. Okay, one more thing, the humor. It was actually a, like it was a humor. very funny, very funny movie. It was actually just, like crazy. Mm-hmm. Was, um, was there? Did you feel that it closed everything out nicely? I can, yes, there was there was some nice callbacks, but yeah, it was like I thought it was a nice close. It was a nice like close off the end game. And a nice set off for the future, a very nice set off for the future. Interesting, oh, I like that. Hello, I'm probably I like that. Sunday. I don't know. We should we should go Sunday. If you want to come to the late show, oh yeah, I got my Buddy, normal. I realize that my life is extremely boring because yeah, soap's been it. Tuesday, it was eight dollar tickets on Tuesday. It was crazy. Like, eight? Oh yeah, but that's why Jesus. it's so crazy. You gotta like, oh my god, I didn't fucking just like spend a thousand dollars at the movies. I realize that my life consists of doing sitting around and doing a lot of nothing. Um, so it's been gone three You're days. You're like a live meme of the Narcos <laughs> of Bob yeah. Escobar just waiting. Dude. Okay, <laughs> so waiting for his wife to come over for a trip. <laughs> yeah, she she comes back on Friday, and I was at my. Oh, hair. you got one more week. Yeah, and so I'm like, I I don't do anything without her. Not not like I don't do things just with her, but like without her, I have no interactions with people except for like this. If I didn't have this. Mm. And maybe a barbecue tomorrow, I could probably go an entire week without seeing a single person except for work, sometimes like outside of work. Sometimes you have to like that. No, it, it's fine. But like, I enjoy her company a lot. And I just, yeah, I miss it more and more, mostly because her and I don't do much in general. I think if we were more social individuals, then it wouldn't matter. Like, she can, I can go, she can go, and then we would do something. But mm-hmm. I'm in the middle of three books. I've practiced my musical instrument two hours a day, which Ew. is not a bad thing. Um, well, you stuck with your plan so far. So far, except for the book, because I need to come up with another title. But I might wow, just do what Anthony said. I might just, just uh, I might just start writing. No, I need to start writing. Oh, you haven't started. I, I wrote well, ta- I wrote a table continue. of contents and I wrote a forward. We so I have like to adjust notes, that rotor. Like, like, that's what I'm like when I try writing something. I just write jot notes for what I want to add in each part, and then yeah. I just fill it in. I did that twenty three. And then I and then I wrote it like by hand because I'm like I'm not a person that wants to type it out. I actually want to do it by hand. Oh, my handwriting sucks. So I need to type it out. Yeah. yeah, no, mine does too. But I still I enjoy it because like I feel like I'm more a part of it. Like the energy is flowing from my brain to my arm and onto the paper. Sounds very sexual. Yeah. That is a, that is overtly sexual. Yeah. Um, you haven't said much. Is there anything you want to say? I don't know. I, I just, want you to say something. You I don't know. I don't have much to chime in on on some of these topics. I don't know. There was one joke on Axe. You said that that scene played my mind when I was writing the script. So this is how it's. I stand by this joke because I find it very funny, but it was very inappropriate. Uh oh, get ready. So it started off, and we were talking, and my co-host said, "Yeah, you know, uh, this teacher, I'll call her Miss H. Miss H. Miss H has been riding us for weeks." I'm like, okay, okay. I'm sure there's a better way to phrase that. She's been riding us about the script for weeks. And that's how it was. It was just one of those things that. 
Oh, yeah, it was overtly yeah. sexual. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no you made it. You like made that. it more sexual well, than it was supposed yeah. to be. You know yeah. what? They all laughed on the inside as much as I they said they didn't like it. <laughs> That's the thing about comedy, man. Everyone, you cannot deny the instantaneous feeling. Oh, everybody who joined us live, thank you so much for joining us on our new lazy Can- the lazy Canadian uh, facts page. Um, the facts page. The facts. Is it a facts page? What is it going to be now? Just memes. Oh, so it's a meme well, page. So for the people that are listening right now, uh, update us on what's been going on. So I was going to start off a new page, the Lazy Canadian. Turn it so it's there. Right. Does it matter? Soon. Yes. Really? Massive difference. Okay. So I was going to start a new page uh, from zero. I already had it ready. And I was bored because I had nothing else going on in my life. Yeah. It's <laughs> so like, okay, I might as well do something. And my friend reached out to me saying, hey, like I have this page lying around. Do you want to use this as a start off? Mm-hmm. It's very dead right now. So I need to keep posting, which is why I'm posting like so much. Yeah. Just to kind of get a like, kick started and get it, keep going. Yeah, um, word, word will get out. Mm-hmm. I think I'm like, I'm losing followers right now oh. because like it's been dead for so long. People find out like, what the fuck is this? They unfollow. Yeah. I've only lost 200 and I think it won't go past 0.5k okay. or 18.5k, okay. which is good as long as it stops there and I can just keep going up because I yeah. have for, for entertain facts for a while I was just losing by like tried gaining a lot of followers so it's just kind of zeroed out yeah but for now what i'm trying to do is just post memes because i have so many from entertain facts on twitter i can just download and just do that easily yeah so so like because that's what gets most attention now like facts are cool and all that but there's so much fucking work and it just eventually gets repetitive yeah then after that i want to do igtv stuff where i can do like more just like video content and me either playing games or just like reacting to like sh- shitty YouTube videos I find or something like that. We're going to just like the games are massive. I think I read that it was like one hundred and eighty million dollars a year that are that it's given out to people playing video games yeah. on YouTube and people watching and people watching. Mm-hmm. But I'm just I don't know, just something to kill time. Do. I wanted that's what I wanted us to do, though, when it came to the video game stuff, like playing all these games while doing commentary, but mm-hmm. like not like just doing a straight live stream. That would be the that would be what I'd really like to do. Mm-hmm. Well, you do Twitch. No, like, I know. We like, have be to, we just like Twitch. you're making fun of stuff going on or no, playing. just yeah, like, just, I legitimately playing, like review. No, no, no. Just playing the game yeah. and like just talking, just mm-hmm. talking like a couple times that I'm sitting there playing games with Soph and then I'll just go around just doing stupid shit with games, specifically like mm-hmm. the open world games because it's a lot more fun to do. Right? Naturally. Um, and just, yeah, just have letting the camera roll and just doing my shit mm-hmm. instead of having to worry about rendering it after and doing all that stuff. See, yeah, I need to wait. So I think I'm getting a laptop for university. Oh. So I'm just going to try and get one that I can actually edit videos on too. Just wait. Because my phone is great, but it overheated so much when I used to do it on my phone. Dude, oh. why? those no. six minute videos. Do uh, Acer, uh, not Acer's. There's an, there's an Acer that has a really good processor that someone had mentioned, unless you'd want to go like hardcore. I was going to go MacBook just because I feel like that has the iMovie shit and it's just easier to do basic videos. Mm. Very basic indeed. You're better off, <laughs> depending on what the videos are, because I mean, you can probably get a better program. You might have to pay for it, but it might be worth it to get like a Premiere Pro. Mm-hmm. But you can also get Final Cut, I believe, for Mac, which you pay monthly, but it's actually, from what I understand, it's a very good video editing program. I'm just waiting for IGTV said they were going to monetize like a while ago. Yeah, I remember I you waiting. released that and we were all excited. And then all yeah. of a sudden we found out it was a bold faced lie. Wah, yeah, wah. what the fuck? They still like they still haven't done it. I'm like, what the? I was waiting. And then I made that meme. Then also. I stared at you and I said you were supposed to be the chosen one. <laughs> Did you see the meme with how uh, the ASA says if you have over 30,000 followers, you're a celebrity? Oh. And I made a meme of Tobey Maguire saying like, I'm not supposed to have what I want, what I need. Saying when you had over 70,000 followers, yeah. and you deleted it and now you're a celebrity if you have over 30,000. Well, feels bad. Holy what are you going to do? What are you going to do? I don't know if you should go the meme route. I like the facts route. I thought it was more informative. The I know. Facts were I, nice. Okay. Just... People my age like the facts. Um, and then a friend of mine from Calgary was like, yeah, the memes were kind of, but he's older. Mm-hmm. It's just not his bag. So you got to mm-hmm. go, you got to play to your audience, right? You can't kind of please, every, you can't appease everybody. I think I actually genuinely did over a thousand facts. Hmm. And it was after a while, was like looking for them was so hard. That's why I kept doing memes because. With memes, I can just do the same video, but just different captions, just yeah. make it whatever. With facts, like I felt bad reposting or stealing someone else's fact just because it was one of those things. But it's not their fact. They found that fact online somewhere. Like yeah. that's the thing. Nobody owns the fact except unless they like. They sponsored. Even if Deadline Holly, like let's say Deadline puts out something and there's a fact, like the one you sent where Gwyneth Paltrow didn't know. What was the yeah. one that you had sent? This is a topic for you. 
Oh, the yeah, Gwyneth yeah, Paltrow yeah. one yeah, for me. <laughs> Why are they not the best aren't for me? Anyways, yeah, and how she no it was more so that she didn't know who Sebastian Stan was yeah. at all. That was a douche, yeah. right? But that's not a that's not like whoever came up with it. That's mm. not just you know if they don't own it. Yeah, you can't you can't own information. I mean, you can, I guess, but you're not publishing it under the guise that it's yours. It's just a fact. Gives you a credit, happens. like yeah. IGN get like. A lot of the stuff I end up sending you guys that's like, oh, topics for here, I yeah. get from IGN because IGN does a pretty good job of just like giving you the highlight to say this is what's what's new. If you want to read more into it, go delve into it. So like that and, kind of stuff. I and think for great. posterity's sake, just Jared on Instagram, he was the one that had posted a Gwyneth Proudfoot didn't know who Sebastian Stan was. There you go. And I think it was from the Just Jared, uh, whatever the fuck it is. So, mm. but she also didn't know she was in Spider Man Homecoming. Yeah. Well, that's more understandable. It was like a scene. It was a cameo yeah. for sure. But you'd think that like the the process of getting yourself from hey, do you want to be in our movie? To it's, it's you're in the movie. Thing, like where they say yeah. like scene. It's like Spider Man Homecoming. <laughs> Someone's it's like, got it's like a, right there. She's get probably getting a check. Mind you, the check probably just says Marvel Studios or probably, Disney. Probably whatever. But, but um, like, but there's the got to be something there. A <laughs> script. Something. I saw a meme and it was like all the female people from Endgame that were watching that. I think that was the one scene where they all together. The A-Force. Yeah, and it was the caption saying, Gwyneth Paltrow trying to figure out what everybody's doing on the set of Avengers 12. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. What else we got? That's funny. I don't know. I don't know. I got nothing else, really. You have not. It's not like you had anything at all. Apparently. I don't know. Nothing it's one of those all. days, I guess. Nothing at all. <laughs> That's okay. Now, now we yeah. Got, now we got a round table of three. I guess so. Oh, it's a it's square. More. Yes. All right. Yeah. Let's close this out. Because we got a party to go Let's to. Close our legs. Actually, not really a party. It's more of a get together. Not gathering. really a get together. More like a I don't know. Um, that's it. That's it. That's it. Okay. So thank you everybody for tuning in once again to another week of yeah for podcast. Yeah, podcast. <laughs> uh, part of the Saskatchewan Podcasting Network. That's all I have. Yes. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at the F4G. You can find us on Instagram at the Lazy Canadian. So the dot lazy dot Canadian dot. No dot. No dot at, at the end. Mm-hmm. Um, you can email us at the F4 podcast at gmail.com, which most of you don't. You can find us on YouTube uh, if you really want to. Let me get the breakdown again. Um, again, if you go to Sask Podcasting Podcast Network dot com, you'll be able to find a bunch of others other podcasts on there if you're from saskatchewan also happy fourth of july to all of our american friends happy canada day that was this past uh, monday or so yes. to all our canadian yeah. friends um hope you guys were safe had a good time uh, i know it was raining in denver because again so it was there also raining here it was raining Actually, cats yeah, and dogs crazy. here for like um 30 minutes in denver whether you're listening to us on Anchor, Stitcher, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Breaker, CastBox, Overcast, Pocket, Cast, Podbean, Radio Public, or, of course, as I mentioned, YouTube. Thank you very, very much. If you do have the opportunity or feel like dropping us a like on YouTube or a comment or a heart or whatever it is on any other platforms that I mentioned, go ahead and do that. If not, don't worry about it. I'm G. I'm Canadian. I'm Vass. <laughs> and we're out. <laughs>